You going up to that lake in uh, Michigan again? We're getting up at 4 a.m. to get out on the road and beat the traffic. Where are you up? I'm crying out loud. Where are you up? Not much further. The chocolate bar in the glove compartment. Face We aren't gonna buy any junk today. <laughs> I think that's very funny. I think I'm sick. <laughs> what next? Now I don't know where you started your life, but I'll tell you this: I started my life in the shadow of the steel man. Oh, alas, alack, my hometown, home in Indiana. Home, where the work ethic is embedded like iron in the marrow of one's bones from birth. Life in the mill town is getting out of school as quickly as possible and getting a job, joining all the other suckers on life's treadmill. characters was assembled. My mom, my sainted mother, she fought cockroaches and plant aphids all of her life. My old man, he had strong beliefs. He believed in Chevy's, Blatt's beer, and Lucky's. <laughs> oh yes, and vacations. My kid brother Randy, a kid who knew the value of a good wine and sniffle to get what he wanted. Fuzzhead, a loyal companion through thick and thin. Sure. Flick. <laughs> Already Flick was skating out of the thin ice of legality. Schwartz. <laughs> a born straight man, a true victim. Mr. Scott, my first boss. Even today, I wake up in a sweat dreaming about him. <laughs> I learned about work from him and how. At 14, I was a crazed fishing nut. I read Field and Stream over and over again. In northern Indiana, lakes with fish in them are far and few between. Oh, it was all a dream. The old man's two-week vacation at the lake in Michigan was heaven. Four a.m. F. Scott Fitzgerald once said that in the dark night of the soul, it is always four o'clock in the morning. Turn that off. <clears throat> Time. Time to get up. Time to get up. Rise and shine. It's the early bird that gets the worm, and you want to beat the traffic. Oh, come on, sleepyhead. We want to miss the traffic. Vacation. Huh? Hooray. 50 weeks of drudgery, and the old man was ready to break the chains. Every year, he swore that he'd get out on the road before dawn to miss the traffic. Every year, he lost the battle. Turn off that crummy light. How about some bacon and eggs? Oh. That'd be nice. Some pumpernickel toast? Uh. Randy! Well, come on, it's time to get up! <sighs> the 
only room in the house that's even remotely civilized at 4 a.m. is the kitchen. My mother's Chinese red chenille bathrobe, a little bit of petrified egg on the lapel. It was her mother uniform. Oh, darn. <laughs> I've got a constant stream of shocks from the radio. The old man always said that was because it was such a powerful Sears Roebuck radio. It's 4.17 a.m. and the weatherman says it's going to be a scorcher today. Temperature could reach 92 degrees. Can you believe that? Good day to head out to the beach with the gang. Now here's a little something to get you going on this beautiful summer morning. Boy, is it early. It really is early. Your father's trying to beat the traffic this year. You're cheerful this morning. How about some bacon and eggs? Would you like bacon or sausage? What? Your eggs. I say you want bacon or sausage with them. Um, yeah. I guess I inherited it from the old man. Getting up before dawn was never my strong suit. Dad, I can't do my not. I gotta go. Ralph, would you help him? I've got to mind these eggs. We're crying out loud. Ralph, you heard me. Gee. Okay, Roy, right, let's go. Come on. Nothing got Fuzz head up quicker and more ready for action than the distant, faint aroma of bacon. Old Radar knows she had an appetite like your average crocodile. Girl. On this first moment of the beloved two-week vacation, our little band was complete and ready for action. Are you up? Your eggs are done. Except for the old man, of course. Rise and shine! Stop that! I hate it! I'm just resting my eyes. This vacation almost didn't happen. It was a near thing. The saga began a couple of weeks before with, of all people, Fuzzhead. The spring itch had gotten Fuzzhead. <laughs> she took long, mysterious walks by herself. We later found out why. The spring itch had gotten to me and Schwartz and Flick, too. Let us now turn back the clock. Boy, is this a pain in the neck. If I'd have known how long this is going to take, I would have said forget it. Yeah. Maybe they forgot we're here. Come on. Terminal official boredom. Well, we learned all about it that summer. Somebody was smoking in here. I can smell it. Not me. Nobody smoking here? Not us. No, officer. Not us. You look like the one. If it happens again, I'll run you in, kid. Poor Schwartz, a victim from birth. You crumb. You gotta get us all in the can. Chicken. Johnson. Johnson. What the heck? We were here before that guy. Schwartz, Parker, Flick. It's us. Come on, Ralph. It was our 14th summer. We were now legal to get working papers. Oh, boy, was it exciting. Oh, boy. Working papers, wow! Hot dog, now we can get rich. Anderson. The three of us had taken that Anderson. first step on the endless treadmill of toil that is man's lot. Hey, here's one. 
hog slaughterer. Oh, that sounds oh, great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, here, professional wrestler. You can do that, Ralph. Yeah, that can't be that hard. Oh, the Bluebird, the old man's exclusive club. Exclusive, of course, to him and his buddies and other Blatt's beer fans from the neighborhood who hung out there. Okay, okay, you guys like that one. This is one of my niece's favorites. <clears throat> there was this Jesuit priest went into this bar, see? He was leading a police dog, and he had a turtle on a leash, see? You guys heard this one? No, no, no. no. Okay. <laughs> no. This priest says to the bartender, we'll uh, have two bottles of beer and a glass of milk. Oh, no, no. You're not telling Archie. that story in here. Oh, oh, you want to tell that story, guys? You take your buddies out into the street and tell it. Draw me another one. Yeah. It's pretty tough keeping the elegant tone of the bluebird when guys like you come in. Yeah, well, you won't have to put up with me for a couple of weeks starting Monday. A vacation? Yeah. Bye-bye. Don't mind. Where are you going? The same place? Yeah. Two weeks of the mother-in-law's again, huh? Yeah. Beautiful downtown Indianapolis. Well, at least you'll get some sleep anyways. Uh, yeah. Between arguments. Hmm. Bernice is trying to talk me into Las Vegas this year, but I don't know. She wants to hear some more of them great stories, huh? <laughs> I'm taking the first two weeks of August. Are you going up to that lake in uh, Michigan again? And I got Marie this year. Oh, Marie? Hey. <laughs> Marie who? Hey, you're not talking about that blonde in the accounting department with the... Oh, come on, cut it, Zuda. Cut the clowning. Marie's the name of the cottage. It's named after the Dion quintuplets. We got Yvonne last year. But the roof leaked. Every year, our little family trekked northward through the wilds of Michigan to the lake. Clear Lake. And Ollie's five rustic cabins. Year after year after year, the old man loved it, and so did I. Ollie says they're really biting this year. They're jumping right out of the lake into the boat. Well, just once. Just once before I die, I'd like to go fishing on my vacation. Well, here's to my mother-in-law. Here's to Ollie Hop Noodles' haven of bliss. Here's to the blackjack dealer. <laughs> of course we're going to the lake again this year. Oh, just once I wish we could do something like that. I hear they have slot machines and everything. Oh, my goodness, it's getting late. I've got to go put the meatloaf in. I'll call you tomorrow. Oh, Bernice, they are going to cut your phone off for saying stuff like that. Doesn't he wish? I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. you just smell that meatloaf? Yeah, she set the standard for the whole state. She was to meatloaf what Ted Williams was to long ball hitting. Mom was a slugger. Is that a hot one? My shirt is soaked through. How'd it go at the office today? Ah, uh, are you kidding? How does it ever go at that dumb office? But it won't be long now. What won't be long? I can hardly wait, I'll tell you. Sox lost again. They won about two games since May. Being a White Sox fan was the old man's major cross in life. Randy? Mm. Well, come on down, honey. Your dad's home. What's for dinner? Meatloaf and peas with those little onions. Ah, oh, smells good. Mm. Smells like beef punkles. I, um, talked to Bernice today. Bernice? Gertz? Mm-hmm. They're going to Las Vegas this year. Yeah, I know. He'll probably lose his shirt. How can they afford that? For starters, they don't have any kids. Oh. Still Las Vegas. <laughs> Ma, my duck's stuck in the drain, and the water won't go out. Oh, your duck is down in the drain, and the water won't go out? That's serious. And I can't button my shirt. Uh, come here, Skabooch. I can do that. Here, it's rap trap himself. Just in time for dinner. Wait 
till you see what I have. Oh, well, wait a minute. Let me guess. A new pair of snowshoes. Come on, Dad. Be serious. <laughs> This is? What? My working papers. Ta-da! Oh, well, congratulations, fool. Welcome to the club of galley slaves. Working papers? Ralph, you're not old enough for working papers. Why, you're just a boy. Oh, you're... Mom, I'm 14. Well, I know, but that's too young to have a regular job. You've got plenty of time what for that. What do you mean? Kids are spoiled enough as it is. When I was 14, I had two jobs I've been working for 10 years. All fathers since the beginning of time have believed that kids have it easier than they did when they were a kid. Generation after generation, my old man was in the great tradition. I had to walk five miles through the snow to school. Yes, yes, we know. And then when you got home, you'd have to shovel the sidewalk, clean the basement, chop the wood, and... Oh, phone is ringing, phone is ringing. Yes, we know. Hello? Buzzhead is Ralph. Did you see her out in the yard? Ralph, it's for you. Winston Churchill. Yeah, Schwartz, what? Oh, honey, would you check outside and see if Fuzzhead's out on the back porch? Here, Fuzzhead. Yes, yeah, Fuzzhead, nice, Fuzzhead. All right. Get in here. Yeah, see you tomorrow morning. Yeah, what did he want? Well, would you believe it? Me flicking Schwartz got a job interview at 7.30. 7.30 in the morning? Over at Scott's Used Furniture Palace. On State Street? Yeah. Well, if you get a job, Shoestring, that means that you can't come to the lake with us this year. You know that. Yeah, I know. But I really want a job. And Schwartz and Flick are going to have a job, too. Can I say something? I don't know why, but I've got this funny feeling. About what? About Fuzzhead. I'm worried about Fuzzhead. Fuzzhead? She's probably just... She never misses supper. I don't know why. I just have a funny feeling. Fuzzhead! 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 Thus began the scary Fuzzhead saga, which traumatized our family for years. We never forgot it. Mr. Scott, he looked like a cross between Rasputin and the Wolfman, but he couldn't have. It must be my imagination. It's the way I see him now. He probably was just an ordinary looking guy. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Well, uh, uh, you're here for work, is that it? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh -huh. You have work and papers? Uh, thank you, thank you. Which one are you, Schwartz? That's me, sir. Uh-huh. Flick? Me, sir. Uh, okay. And you're Ralph? Uh, yeah. Are you gentlemen ready to work? You bet. Sure. Yes, sir. You're ready to throw your shoulders against that wheel? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. We'll find out. I want to congratulate you, boys. You're hired. A truly historic moment. My first real job. You can have only one first job in your whole life. I learned about the treadmill from Mr. Scott. I safely moon of Kentucky, keep on shining. Shine like the stars. Brace yourself, Ace. Here they come. <laughs> and what better place to celebrate our new job than John's? The seedy, oh, greasy spoon down the street from the high school. The food was terrible. John was as mean as a bear with a bad molar. But all the kids hung out there. No one knew why. Cheeseburgers all around? Yeah, yeah. sure. And large colas as usual? Uh, olive cola. Uh, root beer. Three cheeseburgers, Ace. Oh, wow. It feels funny having a real job. Just think of what we can do with all that money. Oh, I'm going to go down to Sears. I'm gonna look at one of those new racing bikes. Uh, I'm gonna get a sports coat, you know, with the padded shoulders and pearl buttons. Look great while I'm driving my Chevy. 
Or maybe one of those split bamboo fly rods. <laughs> I'll surprise Clara May with a new bill of her watch and chocolates and candy. Hired less than an hour, and already we were spending dough we didn't have like drunken sailors. Just like millions of our fellow Americans. Spend it even if you don't got it. Oh, come on. I'll have enough money to take Clara May out to dinner. Hey, John. Won't cost Were we ever that young? No, when I was born, I was 40. You too? Yeah. <laughs> hey, here's a toast to Mr. Scott. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our boss. Hi, ho. Hi, ho. Our first day at work. Oh, wow, I was so excited, I couldn't even eat breakfast. I could hardly wait to get going. Well, gentlemen, you're now members of the family. You go down and you ask for Heidi. He'll put you to work. Good luck. And remember whose name is on the water tower. Scott. Okay. Scott. Right. Scott. Scott. Me. Scott. Heidi, I'm sending three more down. Is this a police? Um, well, my name is Parker, Mrs. Parker, and I'd like to report a very cute little dog that's lost. Well, she didn't come home for Dindin last night, and she's not here this morning. What? Well, she wouldn't do something like that. She's a girl dog. Uh, black and white, and really very little and cute, and she's got this um, tuft of white fur. Fuzzhead. Her name is Fuzzhead. What's so funny? That's her name. Fuzzhead. Ooh. What do they want? Fuzzhead! Shoot. Just Timmy, that dumb Airedale yeah. from down the street. What did the cops want? Nothing. I called them about Fuzzhead. Fuzzhead? You called the cops about the stupid dog? Well, she didn't come back this morning, and I'm so worried about her. I'm going to go out and look for her. Up, look, look. I got a roll here, but look, listen. Don't worry. She'll come back when she's hungry. Don't call the cops. But she's I... never done anything like this before. Oh, don't worry about it. She'll be all right. She's not far. Oh, it'll be all right. She's okay. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I can't go on any vacation until we find Fuzzhead. I'll be right there, Zudok. Keep an eye out for her on your way to work. Yeah. And remember what I said. I'm not going on any dumb old vacation until we find Fuzzhead. Oh, for crying out loud. I'm not kidding! What a nightmare. My back ached. My stomach hurt. Oh. Push, 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 push! <gasps> If this was work, forget it, forget it. I don't know what's happened to Fuzzhead. Oh, she'll be back. She's not gone for good. But she's never done anything like this before. Never. Maybe somebody kidnapped her. I was reading in Ripley's Believe It or Not about this spotted dog that came home after 12 years. He walked all the way from California, and one day he just walked in, lay down, and went to sleep next to the stove. His name was Leonard. So you see, you never know. Even the milkman hasn't seen her. Maybe she went visiting. Visiting? Who would she visit? Well, when Lud and I were living in Peoria, we had this neighbor who had a horse named Howard, and every year he'd take a couple of weeks off and visit his cousin in Niles, Michigan. Your neighbor had a cousin in Michigan? No, the horse had a cousin in Niles, Michigan. Visited every year. Pass the sugar, please. Well, I don't think Fuzzhead has any relatives around here. Well, you never know with dogs. 
Mm. Right, this is good coffee cake. I made these posters with Randy's crayons. I'm going to stick them up all over town. Oh, they look nice. And I put an ad in the paper. <gasps> an ad? Oh, I've always wanted to put an ad in the paper. They asked me what kind of dog Fuzzhead was. Mm. I said she's a cute, sweet little dog. That's what kind of dog she is. And I offered a reward. A reward? What kind? I don't know. I haven't decided. I'll bet they would love a jar of that rhubarb jelly you made. That's an idea. Emily, I've got to go. I want to put up my posters. Can I go with you? Bud's down at the Bluebird, and he'll never miss me. All right, come on along. I'm going to find Fuzzhead if it's the last thing I do. I still think she's visiting a relative. I read this article in the paper once. May not make it to the lake this year. What? I'm not going to the lake. Yeah, come, well, come. You know our dog, Fuzzhead. Now, you're not sure? going to believe this, but she disappeared, and the old lady said she is not going on any vacation till she finds the dumb oh, dog. Oh, for crying out loud. I wish my old lady would have known she's not going to Indianapolis this summer. Boy, I don't get that kind of luck. Ah. Ah. Nothing like a cold blast at the end of a day at the office. Oh, or two. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, I keep wondering how the kid's doing on his first day at work. Education in life had truly begun. That night, I hurt all over. It was like every inch of me had been pounded by small sledgehammers driven by imps. One day on the job, and already I hated it more than going to the dentist. How'd it go, watermelon? Okay, I guess. <laughs> Welcome to the club, kid. Let's go, Mom's got supper on. I thought my brains would cook in that office today. Well, I ran all over town today putting up my posters about Fuzzhead. I put one in the Bluebird, did you see it? That's a good idea. Did you hear anything yet? No. Emily went with me. She says that she thinks Fuzzhead's visiting a relative. She's visiting your sister? Fuzzhead is visiting your sister? No. Visiting one of Fuzzhead's relatives. That's a theory. Emily says she never can tell about dogs. Hey. How was it? Okay? Okay. Just okay, huh? Fuzzhead coming home. Oh, don't you worry, sweetheart. Fuzzhead will be home really soon. Oh, look at this. Flugel Supreme Bass Reel here on page 25. Now, if that isn't the prettiest thing you ever saw. There's nothing in the world of literature that can send the blood racing quicker than a fishing tackle catalog. I have seen grown men weep over pictures of fly rods and salmon streamers in full color. This year, my fishing dreams had turned to ashes. I would spend the summer like Sisyphus, pushing rocks up mountains. Oh, I wonder what poor Fuzzhead is doing right this minute. Oh, she's probably sitting around with one of her cousins, talking about the old days. And then they decide to catch a movie. Maybe Lassie come home? <laughs> yeah, and then afterwards, they drop by the bowling alley for a little billiards and uh, maybe a couple of hot dogs. Hot. Dog. <laughs> I don't think that's very funny. Wet blanket. 
At the crack of dawn, we were back in hell. I had slept 14 hours and I was still tired. I could feel myself getting older by the minute. ahead of us like the Sahara Desert, slaving under the burning sun. <sighs> I hardly remember the next two weeks. I toiled ceaselessly at Scott's used furniture palace. Mom relentlessly searched for Fuzzhead. Like Ahab, she was driven. with pure hearts. The three of us had joined that long, endless line of the world's slaves. Going back in time beyond imagining, we had joined the great suffering masses of mankind. Faster, faster. That's all they ever say to slaves, faster. We slaves had joined the age-old war against the rotten bosses. Spartacus lives. In spite of everything, the rich, full life of the bluebird went on. What am I going to do? Two weeks, look for a dog? On occasion, he was dragged out by the heels to look for the dog, the crummy dog.
About this time, he was beginning to entertain thoughts of murder. newspaper ad had worked. Oh, the power of advertising. This event rocked the neighborhood. People from three counties arrived with mutts trying for the big reward. had passed. I was three inches shorter. I was 36 years old and picking up speed. I had worn out six or seven pairs of Levi's. My knees were beginning to bulge. Hey, fellas. Mr. Scott wants to see you. Come on down. Men, I just got a call from Heine. And you know what Heine said? He said it just hasn't worked out. But why? You just haven't worked hard enough. You haven't put your shoulders to the wheel. I'm sorry. You pick up your salary from Mrs. Whipple. But... Oh, and by the way, uh, we're going to deduct $2 a piece for them work gloves. And don't forget to turn them in when you leave. That's all. Fired! The axe had fallen. Good luck, man. Good luck. Good luck. The great front office chopper had lopped off our heads just like that. How many millions of times has this happened to innocent workers all over the world? Bam! And you're dead. Just as me and Schwartz and Flick were reeling under our terrible, terrible disgrace, a miracle happened.
Should she be walked, madam? Shortly. <laughs> Should I ascertain what these people want, madam? But who are they? Excuse me, lady, but this is a private drive, sir. The public beach, sir, is that way. Oh, Dad, oh, sweetheart, it's Fuss Fuss head. Head. No, 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 this is Fufu, my sherry, Fufu. She left us about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, my darling Fufu scratches upon the door, and I... Know... I opened the door myself, sir, and there she was. Well, she has come, so I know this is where she wants to stay. And she does so enjoy the caviar in this Fufu. And she drinks only avian water. Oh, for crying out loud. Hey, look at the diamonds on her collar. All right, Whoa. dear. Shh, 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 shh. But if she is, as you say, a fool's head, then she should be with a rightful people, isn't that so? Indeed, madam. Uh, and there's a reward, too. A great uh, big fat five spot. One thing about the rich, they never miss a chance to add to the pile. And as Fufu is so darling, I make her a present of the color. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Come along, Fuzzhead. Bye-bye, Fufu. Don't forget your collette. You, you know, we could bring her over to visit you. That won't be necessary. Fuzzhead had tasted the rich wine of the truly good life. But she was never quite the same afterward. You are back among the poor, Fuzzhead. The good life ain't for everybody, kid. I'm so glad Fuzzhead's back, the little dickens. You know, I hate to say this, but I am convinced that Fuzzhead went out and deliberately looked for a better spot. Fuzzhead wouldn't do something like that. Not my Fuzzhead. Fuzzhead was left with only her memories. that pile of vacation stuff. You know, for a while there, I didn't think we were going to make it this year. Ma, can I bring my raccoon? Oh, for crying out loud, that thing is three feet tall. We're overloaded as it is. Ma. Yes, Randy, you may bring him. I'm going to miss Ralph this year. But then the guy's got a job. Here he is, Ralph the Slave Kid. Buzzhead! I'll be darned, it's Buzzhead. Where was she? That's a long find story, her. Ralph. I'll tell you after supper. Get washed up. I see you got out all the camping stuff. Yeah, it's too bad you can't make the trip to the lake this year. Well, I have some big news. I quit my job. You quit, quit your job? job? Quitting a job is something that is not in the work ethic. Well, I got to thinking, even though I wanted a Sears racing bike, I couldn't desert my family. A fat lie that turns you from a bum into a hero is the best kind of lie. They never knew I was canned, ever. Now look, we're all going to have supper and get to bed early, because we're getting up at 4 a.m. to get out on the road and beat the traffic. How many years had we heard that same old tune? We're getting up early and beat the traffic, right? The family was back on track. And Ollie Hopnoodles, haven of bliss, here we come. Rise and shine! <clears throat> Are you up? Will you shut up? Ralph, I've asked you not to feed the dog at the table. 
always had the idea that going to the lake was like mounting an expedition to Antarctica. A full platoon of hungry infantrymen could have survived for a month on what she dragged along. Cigarettes. Oh, I forgot to buy them. Everyone knew how dangerous it was to go to them at an hour like this. Uh, I'm smoking old butts from the ashtray. Coffee! Uh, the first golden moments of the old man's vacation had begun. Okay, we got the thermos. Check. We got the toilet paper. Check. We got Randy's canteen. Check. And the camera and the Kleenex and the baseball. Check. There's the coffee pot. Uh, <laughs> check. <laughs> Extra blankets. Check. Okay, we have the Electrolux. And the bananas. Check. We have your bowling ball. And we have the raccoon. Check. All three tennis rackets. Check. Box of canned goods. Check. Spare tire. We have been loading the car now for hours. You know, that's an important part okay, of the I'll vacation down, ritual. When you only get two weeks out of the year, you make a big deal out of it. Dear, the basement windows are closed and locked, and the front door is locked. Have you got the bath mat? The what? The bath mat. A bath mat? What do you want a bath mat for? Well, you never know. It might be nice. Never mind. I'll get it. For crying out loud. This rope's good, Dad. Okay. What's that for? This? Well, this is in case somebody gets sick. Are you in there, Randy? Oh, good, dear. Now, don't, don't play with that. That belongs to your father. No, dear, not now. Here, just play with your view, Master. Lie down now. Head down. Put your head down. Now, you be a good doggy and go right to sleep in the park. Ralph, I want you to keep an eye on Fuzzhead for me. OK. No, not me. All right, that's your last chance. All right, here we go. Everybody pile in. Let's get this show on the road. At last, we were ready for blast off. I can hardly wait. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Starter spring is stuck again. All right, now you turn the key when I jump up and down on the bumper. Do I have to depress the clutch? No, just turn the key. Don't say a word. Everybody sit real still. Don't even breathe.
I gotta go. I knew it. I knew it, but you're just gonna have to hold it. The road, the natural state of being for every American. Oh, the wind in our hair, the hum of tires, the yellow line coming at you forever. I get that Michigan map in there. Holy cow! Who stuck the chocolate bar in the glove compartment? What dumb sucker put the... It's got nuts in it. This became one of the family's great unsolved mysteries. Nobody admitted it. It couldn't have been Randy. He would have instantly eaten the chocolate bar. My mother did not approve of candy in any form. I know I didn't do it. Who did? Was it the old man himself? The story never came out, and neither did the chocolate. From that day on, we had a chocolate-lined glove compartment with nuts. We are a nomadic people. It was Americans who created the mobile home, not Yugoslavians or Belgians, Americans. Travel to an American is what eating strudel is to a German. We are simply reaffirming our national heritage. Okay, everyone, now what am I thinking of? It's a five-letter word. Is it an animal? No. Is it a vegetable? No. Well, then it has to be a mineral. No. Mom, it's got to be either an animal, vegetable, or mineral. Why? Randy, are you all right? I think I'm sick. <laughs> Uh-oh, stop the car. Oh, for crying out My kid that. brother was afflicted with a virulent disease which they called in those days car sickness. Like the bubonic plague and scurvy, it seems to have disappeared somewhat in the recent years. All right, Randy, hurry up! Every 30 miles or so, he unleashed another barrage. And you know, considering that he rarely ate anything, we always wondered where it all came from. He had an endless supply. <laughs> long trip as in times of yore travelers whiled away the time by telling stories and playing games they did it on the way to canterbury and on dante's vacation trip to hell i know let's play 20 questions ralph you start this time all right i'm thinking of a word beginning with b you've got 20 questions is it a purple frog? No, stupid. I said B. Aww, I thought you said P. Baseball game? Nope. Two down. I know what it is. What? Baloney. How'd you guess? I know how you think, Ravish Tom. Hooked rugs. We're trying to make it to Ollie. 
Ollie's before dark. I'm thirsty. Then shut up for once, will you? Shut up. Oh, you both shut up. What is your mother doing? Just a few years ago, half the country seemed to be engaged in making hooked rugs. My foot's asleep. The other half, in buying them. What do I do? Just once, I'd like to get to Ollie's before dark. Just once. Look at him, Mr. Goat. Look at the goat, Dad. Hey, Mr. Goat. A minute. What the heck was that all about? Do you know that that was her favorite rug? She just couldn't bear to part with it. Isn't that something? She says that she hasn't sold anything in years. She even gave me these eggs. She says that selling one of them would be like selling one of her own children. She's a nutcake. Yeah. A real weirdo. No, she isn't, Ralph. She is a very nice lady. She's just an artist. If she's an artist, I am Mario Andre. Bye, I'm waiting for a Texas Royal Supreme Blue Station. What for? They sponsor the White Sox games. Oh. Gee whiz, Dad. Ah, shut up. No one asked you to come. So it went, hour after boring hour. Why, well, you want to fill her up there, Bob? Uh, kids got to use a toilet. Oh, okay. Round the side there, pass them tires. It's around the side there, pass them tires. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, why, George, that's dry as a bone. You got need about two and a half quarts, I'd say. You want the good stuff or the cheap stuff? The cheap stuff. Heaviest you got. All right. Quite an antique you got here, huh? Real collector's item, ain't it? <laughs> Hey, you must 
must be talking about Luke. <laughs> Can I go take a look? <laughs> it's your life. I want to go, too. Certainly not, young man. You are getting right back into that uh, car. Let's go see this ferocious beast. <laughs> Not your ordinary dog. What kind is he? He's Mears Hound. Mears Hound? Never uh, heard of Mears Hound. Oh, they bred up in Massachusetts. They, they go three, four hundred pounds full grown. Of course, Luke, he's just a pup. Pup? Yeah, that'd be a dollar, please. Oh, smoked. Pup. Well, there ain't many of them around no more. They're illegal in most states. <laughs> At least once every trip, the radiator boiled over. If it wasn't the thermostat, it was that the old man had forgotten to get the radiator flushed out. Oh, either way, it was good for a half hour of excitement. by the car. Give her a bowl of water. Oh, crying out loud. The fuel line is leaking. Ugh. Honey, just let it cool down for a minute. Come on and have a picnic with us. Oh. Oh, oh I tell you. That baby is on its last legs. What's in this sandwich? Salmon salad surprise. Some surprise. Pass me the pickles. You can do that. Mm. Oh, I tell you, I've been drinking pickle juice since I was a kid. It prevents you catching colds. I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Well, Randy, honey, this is salmon salad surprise. They're very nice. I made them just the way Aunt Glenn makes them. You always eat them when we're at Aunt Glenn's. I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now, Randy. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and he has the last tomato. For crying out loud, one here. You can have the rest of it. I don't want 
a dumb old tomato. And look what you did. You knocked it into the weed. Well, you cut it out, you two. I got enough problems with that Chevy over there. I don't want to hear you two yapping all afternoon. Have you ever noticed that on every family trip, there's almost invariably one cranky kid? Randy was a fabled cranky kid. Whenever we took any kind of a trip over a mile and a half in length, oh, if he wasn't being car sick, he was just plain unadulterated cranky. I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Randy, please stop complaining. I don't have any more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You ate the last one half an hour ago. I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Come on, Runch. You're really getting to be a pain in the neck. What do you know? You want the boss. Hey, 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 hey. Randy, cut that out. I want you to eat your nice sandwich. I don't want this dumb sandwich. I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I don't like this dumb old sandwich. This is a very poorly marked detour, I'll tell you that. I don't even think this is a road. Ancient legends of the sea, as every old salt will tell you, say that when lost on the deep, the victim is doomed to sail in circles forever, forever and forever, searching for a landmark. Set on all sides by strange creatures, evil monsters, the lost mariner searches and searches in the Sargasso Sea of Life. Oh, what a lovely field. Hey, there's a road. There's a road. Old log cabin, or what stop? Crying out loud. It'll 
Tucked rugs, ashtrays from Niagara Falls, plastic birds, ornaments, glass balls on concrete stands. Every year, there must be 70 million tons of roadside junk bought by migrating Americans. has as yet fully explained the urge that large numbers of people have to dot their lawn with plastic flamingos or elves squatting under toadstools. When he's at home and in his right mind, he would never think of buying a pink plastic duck. But when he's on the road, somehow it makes sense. Anything I can do for you? Oh, no, thanks. We're just looking. I love these windmills, though. Yeah. They spin. Yeah, wind does it. Oh, honey, isn't that clever? The wind does that. Yeah, and them ducks, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> Look at those blue mirror balls. Randy, please cut that out. What? Hi, dear. Uh, just a few more minutes, honey. The crucial moment that a fan of slob art makes a decision to buy and actually pay for a concrete toad or a gold mirror ball, <laughs> and they don't come cheap either, is a moment when he is making an important artistic decision. I'm gonna make you sit in the car, Ralph, if you hit your little brother one more time. That gold mirror ball, that toad, could become a family heirloom passed down from one suffering generation to the next. I've always wanted one of these. Yeah, we got an automatic model. It comes with a motor and batteries if you live where there ain't no wind. That is so nice. I love this blue one with the yellow veins. Oh, that's a popular model, ma'am. Uh, that and this red one. Oh, sell a lot of them. It is my belief that most purchases of this sort of lawn slob art are instigated by women. I've rarely met a man who has an uncontrollable urge to buy a Dutch windmill. Where the heck are we going to put it? How much is it? Well, since it's the end of the shipment, I can let you have it for, oh, um, twenty-eight ninety-five. dollars Oh, for crying out loud. Hey, Ma, how about one of these? No, honey, I, I really like the windmill. Oh, that's a good choice, ma'am. This comes with a money-back guarantee. If you're not fully satisfied, you get your money back in 10 days. I really want it, honey. Where's Granny? You're looking at him. Your Granny? Well, used to be called Elmer's Old Log Cabin, but business wasn't so good. So I changed it to Granny's Log Cabin, see? And triple business. <laughs> but this one here is uh, $28.95. I want it, dear. It's the best windmill in the industry. Give you years and years of dependable action. It would look so great out behind the garage. No. Uh, could I interest you folks in uh, uh, maybe a, a, a concrete mushroom or a little concrete elf? I got, I got a sale on discontinued elf. Let's go. It's getting late. We aren't going to buy any junk today. And so, in the great tradition of the tourist, our family acquired a Dutch windmill for the lawn. The year after, we got two flamingos. And then the year that the old man got his raise, we finally got that beautiful white plastic donkey. Oh, the urge to add beauty to one's life is irresistible. For about an hour, something had been nagging at my mind. Something bad. Now I realize what it was. Dad? I had to tell him there was no way out. Dad? Yeah? Uh, Dad. Yeah, what do you want? I forgot all the fishing tackle. I left it in the garage. You did what? I left it in the garage when Randy went back. What next? 
He was soon to get the answer to that one. Honey, can you pass this truck? Oh, yeah, sure. This clunker couldn't pass a turtle with bad Look at that. giant truck filled with 20 million chickens had pulled ahead of us, blocking the vision for miles around. There was no way the Chevy could get around him. He stayed there mile after mile, spraying us with everything the chickens can do. that the old man saw much of life as an extension of this curious insult. He often described it in those exact terms. He even used the word chicken. <laughs> bee trauma. Periodically, bees magically appeared in the Chevy. My mother was deathly afraid of insects of all variety, especially bees. onward, upward and onward, the courageous pioneer blood is not yet lost in the American soul. now. Good. Uh, gotta be in the car, though. Back uh, just before you hit Crystal Lake. Yeah, that's right. Just before you come by Henshaw's barn. Yes. God darn, that son of a gun's been doing that all summer. Got me twice. <coughs> Get out of here, Andy. Get out. Get out. Get out. Well, you got Marie this year. Marie, that's right. Right. How are they biting? Well, they was hitting real good last week. They was biting anything you threw at them. Then just yesterday afternoon, they stopped. Never seen it so slow. 
Yeah, well... I guess that's the way it goes. Thanks, Ollie. Get away from there, Andy. Every fisherman in the world knows how they were biting last week when those other mysterious fishermen were around. You know those guys. They're always there. When the action is hot and heavy, they know when it's going to happen. Oh, well. We were at the lake, and who knows? They might start biting again. Just might. Ollie owned six cabins on the shore of Clear Lake, which was rimmed solidly with a thick incrustation of summer shacks, except at the north end where we were, where the swamp began and the mosquitoes swarmed. Boy, was that Daddy, some go, I trip. Marie. I'm so glad we have Marie again this year. Do you remember when we had her three years ago? Yeah, it's the one that has the snake under the porch, isn't it? Yeah, I wonder if it's still here. <laughs> Place is pretty clean, except for the ants. Uh, there's nothing like the beginning of a vacation. Nothing in the world. Cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. Empty the trunk of the car. Okay. I saw that piled up in the garage. I thought I'd teach you a lesson. The old master never misses a trick. It was like a molten ball of fear had left my soul. Suddenly and without warning, I felt great. Here was my split bamboo casting rod, my tackle box with its bassarinos. Oh, I felt great. I really thought I blew it. What do you mean you thought? You blew it. <laughs> you did. I saved you behind. Now, come on, Axel. Let's go down to the lake. It's good to be here, you know that? Yeah. You have any idea what this means to me? He was a million miles away from work, from the memos and the phone calls and the garage, even our kitchen back at home. The old man for two weeks was free. Freedom. And he loved it.
the beginning of a torrential downpour which was to continue 24 hours a day during our stay at Clear Lake. It didn't matter. We were on vacation. Vacation. The most glorious word in the English language. Honey, what's the matter? Can't you sleep? Mom, why doesn't Dad ever call me by my real name? Just once? Don't you worry about that. That's just his way. He loves you, Ralph. Now you get some sleep. We've all had a long day. But tomorrow you are going to catch a big fish. There are no vacations like the ones of your youth. When everything was new, the smell of the cabin, the sound of the rain on the roof, the family asleep all around you. Thank God for Ollie Hopnoodle's haven of bliss. <laughs> 